Amen. We've been looking at I will honor. It's a declaration from each one of us that I, as a person, I desire that I will honor God. I will honor God. And we have looked at some areas. You see, for us to mount up, we said we have to honor this God and believe his word, trust him, have faith in him, because mounting up is not easy. Mounting up is not easy. Uh, just not long ago, I heard of, of this Dege which Ikiwa Ju Ijinimoja Ikabast. People wakiwa chini wakaona imebast. Then I was wondering, wana wakondani? Captain aliwambia nini? Na kama aliwambia, walifiri ingije. Anyway, they normally say, kama ina injinbiri, moja inaweza enda kidogo, na itue, na ikatua, haikuwa na shida. Mounting up, we need God to service us so well, so that none of our engines will blow up in the sky. As we pursue the purposes of God, in our, li in our lives. Today we want to look at the life of honor and we are looking at Genesis 14 verse 17 to 23. Actually we are looking at the whole of uh, Genesis uh, uh, 14 because it has a lot of teachings that we can learn from there. The life of Abraham which was a life of honor. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chedalaoma and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shavi, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Shalem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be he, be the Most High God, which has delivered thine enemies into thy hand, and he gave him tithes of all. Verse 21. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have left my, up mine hand. I have lift, I lift up mine hands unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a, th from a thread even to the shoe latchet and that I will not take anything that is thine lest thou shouldest stay. I have made Jimmy rich. Oh, it says Abraham. Rich. <laughs> if we ask ourselves, what is the evidence in my life that demonstrates a life of honor? What would the answer be? What would the answer be? Oh, we could speak certainly of ways that God has both blessed and honor us. But that's not the question, you know. Because many times instead of honoring God, we talk about things. The question then, it still remains, is my life of honor to God? Do I live a life that honors God? Looking at facts about chapter number 14 is this fast. We need to know the alliance. We are told that five kings formed an alliance against four kings led by Chedor Lama. That's the first thing. We are told there were four kings here and there were five kings here and they came to war. The second thing that we need to know it is the geography of that place. The five kings The five kings all came from the Jordan River Valley. That's where they came from. For us that went to Israel not long ago, you can tell where the valley, the valley is. And for you that have not gone, Corona Ishe, Twende. These five kings living in Jordan, they were pretty well clustered around the south end of the Dead Sea, and we also went to the Dead Sea. 
But the other alliance was coming from very far. They were from the river Euphrates and Tigris rivers. They were coming from there. That means we never went there. Tulipoenda atukuenda. Uko uko ni Bali. Uko ni Iraqi. Uko. Atukuenda. So the army that was read by Chedorolama was hundreds of miles away from, from home as they, they came. The third thing that we need to know in history, for 12 years, the five kings that were in the valley used to give tribute or they were paying tribute to this man called Chedorolama. Oh man, whatever. Sometimes you say right, sometimes you don't know whether you say right. So they, they used to do. But we conclude that then this man must be a big man. He was a, he was a powerful man. He had a powerful army that all the smaller groups around there came and paid tribute to him. But they refused to pay tribute. So he comes down to war with them. And he comes with other kings to help him. And when he comes, he defeats them. The Raphites, the Zuzites, the Amites, the Horites, the Kikuyites, the Luyites, all of them. They attacked and defeated the people in Jordan Valley, that alliance. So Chedorama and those with him then looted the five cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and everything and carried everyone that was there. Lot and his family were also taken captive. So finally, we need to know the outcome. Abraham was informed of what happened from someone who escaped. And Abraham arms his only 318 men that were with him so that, and he drew a strategy for him to overcome this king that had overcome Sodom and Gomorrah. 318, five kings. Lazima kuwe na mchoro. Maisha, maisha ni kujipanga. Na tuwe na mchoro. Uziishi nde alavufuwa panga. <laughs> Wacha kustuka na unastuka unastua watu. Eh? Unastuka unastua watu. Mama umempeleka maternity. Sayo di unastuka. Hatu... Sasa mama sijui tutamtoa na mna gani. Ume, ume, miezi tisa mungu alikupa ata kama umekua ukisevu tu ngiri moja moja ungekua ukisema. Sistuki. Niko na ngiri tisa. Mama yuko matanete. Nina jianda. Ama unakuja kutustua. Umempeda dada wa watu. Harafu ni kama unastuka. Unajua ni naenda rurashio kesho. Amen. Good morning. Anyway, Abraham Hakustuka, though he was not prepared for war, he was not afraid of war. I am not for war, but if the devil brings it at my door, then I will not run away. I will face him. So we are looking at then this life of honor. What is it? How can I, looking at the life of Abraham and Lot, is there anything I can learn of a life of honor? Yes, number one. Life of honor is victorious, not victimized. A life of honor is victorious, not victimized. Struggles are going to be there. Because they are a part of life. However, a life lived in this world and lived with honor will not be victimized. But a life lived without honor will be victimized. That is because there is a lot of victimization. A life in the spirit is a life of continued victory. God gives us way. And we can consider Lot and Abraham to say this. Consider Lot for example. He is the victim of his foolish choices. <laughs> you know, if somebody
if you had a quarrel with your wife, my brother, and then you come to me and you are quarreling over ugali. Kwetu ugali, you know, Rebecca. Kwetu ugali. Unajua kwetu ugali. Ive, we know say meiva ugali. Hey, ama, ama sangura atasema, he in your kikuyu. Tunataka ya kwetu. If, if Samuel came to me, let me use Samuel. And then he came to me and I tell him, watch a ujinga. Because I'm telling him, watch a ujinga kwa sababu, kama ni ugali, ata kama angia songa, apike, vile kwa wanapikaga. He will not be less man. But you see, some, some of us come to pastors and we are feeling so bad. Tutawachana na uyu, alafu na uliza, unachania nini? Uyu ajuu kupika mudhokoi. Si ungea pika, mudhokoi, kupika tu. And you know you will not change. You will still be the man of the house. And now you will have even more authority. Be the man of a house who knows how to cook ugali. <laughs> Victimization. So many small things. And you know sometimes because of allowing the world to rule and guide us, we have missed it. Because one of the things that God will have to save us is that as you grow as a boy, Everywhere you go where men are, they remind you of your tribe and what they believe in and what they pursue. And they are trying to take you away from you knowing that you are a Christian and Christianity is above the cultures that we have around. May God help us. Ati wakikuyu kidogo tumeanza kutishwa na hiyo sijui wanaitwa au ati wazee ati kiyama kiyama. Which one? And all what they are saying, and you kikuyu that are here, watch out. When the government is saying, wasichana wasitairiwe, hiyo kema, utatairiwa ata ukua mze. You know, I was listening to a bishop telling me, I thought it was only in the kikuyus, wakale, bomet. Because, kile umeambiwa na hiyo kule umetoka, they are not so concerned about your health, your life. It is themselves and themselves. And God will need to help us. Not to be victimized. Waseme, waseseme. Kwangu, hawata ingia. Kwangu ni kwangu. Don't allow them to victimize you. A life of honor will always honor. So Lord, ni ujinga wake. Foolishness. That demonstrated his continued desire to honor himself. He is asked by Abraham, unachagua wapi? Kule. Why? For me. Mali pazuri kwangu. So Lord pinched his tent towards Sodom. He was, hakuwa na ubaya towards Sodom. Ni kuangaria tu. Sina ubaya, ni kucheke tu. Tumehubiriwa samo ni bada ya kwanza. We? Cheza na hako kanyoka umeweka kakua kapete. Kata kuuma. Siku katatafuta kitu ya kuuma. Kata kuma. Ama siku katapata distinct. Igide kitu yako kiko ndani. Kata kutupia hiyo sumu. Tuliambi wabari ya, ya simba. Ilikura katoto vidole. So the guy pinched his Genesis 13, 12. He's pinching his tent towards Sodom. And before, before long he is in Sodom. He is a counselor. He is a leader. Because of his. He looked good. And we are not saying he sinned. In actual fact, as far as God was concerned, Lot was okay. That's why Abraham would argue with God. I suppose there are only ten. And God would say, if there are ten, that's okay. Because Lot was there. He had not, he had not gotten into, but what he was doing kept on putting him into sin and to failure. He was captivated by Sodom. He liked seeing Sodom looking at it. And then he was taken captive with the Sodom. He ended up being a leader there. Genesis 13, 12 and 13. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. Pinchy sent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Genesis 14 and verse 12. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. 
It is interesting to note that Lot was constantly troubled by Sodom sinfulness. And I tell you the sin in Sodom was so much even the sons in law refused to go with the Lot. And when they were going, Sodom was so appealing that Lot's wife decided to look back and she became a pillar of salt. Not enough. The girls had lived a life that was so hopeless. They made their father drunk to have children with their father. Because Sodom and Gomorrah was in their lines. So finally, even the man that we know had the desire of God. He messes with his daughters and he has children. Second Peter, 7, Second Peter 2 verse 7 and 8. The Bible says, and delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. He, he, this man was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. Verse 8. For that righteous man dwelling among them, is seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous, righteous soul from day to day with the Yani kukakule, ili musumbua siku. Na usi, usi tudanganye. Usi tudanganye atiwewe. Unaweza angalia pornography mwanaume. Eh? Kwa awe ni chuma. Eh, umeumbwa na chuma. Usitudanganye. It will vex your spirit. It will bring you down. So you have to say no to this and no to that. You have to run away from it. It will vex you. It will bring you down. And this is what it did to Lot. Lot his spirit, because of what he had every day, his spirit was vexed. He lived his life in Sodom and was constantly vexed with the, wick, with the wickedness. However, scripture never recorded that Lot built an altar because that is the biggest problem. You cannot build a an altar where there is evil and sin. You can only build it outside. You look for a good place to build your altar. We know that he lost his children to the world he lost them like I had said. And Lord finds himself captive with the godless world he has chosen to be part of. Lord is a living, of example, a living example of one who is lightly esteemed by God. Remember, you can choose your sin, but you cannot choose your consequence. Tafanya hivi. Consequence inakujaga vitu vingine. Let's consider Abraham. Abraham, the victor through the power of God. We are not saying he was upright. We are not saying he was more holier than thou. But we are saying Abraham allowed the power of God to work in him. Genesis 23 verse 4a. I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Lord was a friend of the world. He sat in the gates of the city. Abraham was a friend of God and saw himself as a sojourner. Meaning, he was temporarily here traveling to a city where the builder and maker was God himself. And this is one of the most important elements of victory for Abraham. He knew who he was. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? We often assume that struggles will come for people like Lot, a picture of the living world. But not for those like Abraham and ourselves who are separated. But the truth be told, even for us, there will be those moments of challenges that are going to come our way. Times of restful communion with God are often found to be the preparations for the next battle. Every time you are at peace, prepare for another one. You know, sometimes you think about it. Are you at peace? Prepare for another battle. When this one you win, prepare for another one. Because that is life that we live in. War wasn't always necessary. But we do know that when it came to Abraham, he was ready to go for it. When, Lord, when Abraham had Lot has been captured, had been taken captive, he was already ready. He had 318 men and he pursued them. How ready are you in times of war and in times of battle? Are you prepared spiritually? Are you prepared in your heart? Do you arm yourself? Are you ready? Because something like what happened to Abraham can happen to you. We are saying 
If you live honoring God, you will not be victimized. You refuse to be a victim. He armed the servants. One of the blessings of what the church does for you, and hear me and hear me good, is that we come to arm you. We call you here on Monday to arm you. It's a military boot camp. We come to arm you and pray. And I like the way people pray. Anyway, first of all, thank you for those that don't come. Because the place is a military camp. You can see one man walking from that end to another end. And he is a military. In, but I'm, I'm not saying when you come we'll not do it. We'll still do it. But I'm saying there is a lot of room. Let's come and be trained and be armed for the time of war. Because it is in prayer. I am myself for tomorrow. We arm you on Monday. We arm you on Wednesday. Hey. Why not? We arm you. We give you missiles that you can keep on throwing to the enemy. We arm you on Sunday. That's why you are here. But you know, Sunday meal is not enough. <laughs> Wegine wanakura marasita. Kwa sababu katikati yako na jugu karanga, sijui nini, anaendelea kikura, <laughs> anakura mara nyingi. Na neno la mungu je, let's not eat it once. Let's arm ourselves in time of war because war is going to come. And some of the war will come to us. It's the devil trying to victimize us. Proverbs 21, that one says, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Suddenly, some believers are always looking for a fight. You want to fight. It is not a fruit of the Spirit. Fight is not a fruit of the Spirit. Don't look for it, but it will come. That's the whole idea. Romans 12 and verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with the brotherly love in honoring and preferring one another. John, 1 John 3 verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Number two, the life of honor is separated, not isolated. I say again, the life of honor is separated but not isolated. It isn't, it isn't, it, 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 it is encouraging that the battle that Abraham was in he was in by choice. He's the one who chose to go and fight for his brother. We have already seen that Abraham was a stranger and a sojourner. However, he did not take this to mean that a life of separation means isolation. No. He was in the world, but not of the world, and he could deliver his brother. I am born again. I am saved. But I will go to work for my family. And I will not look for work only for where the believers are. I will look for work anywhere. I like people who, it doesn't matter what they have. When they, <laughs> I have one friend of mine, he's a young man. And now I'm going to diploma here, I'm going to come. Corona is in the church, I'm going to come. I'm going to come back, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back, I'm going to be a bishop. Life, life shapes us. Kabla leo naenda wapi? Sasa mimi ni watchman wa usiku. Eh, wapi? Runda. Actually I took him to Runda. Because as far as I'm concerned, huyo ni mtu wa kweli. Kuomba omba, no. Apewe fumbo, asimame pale, apewe hiyo 200,300. Wengine Hata njaa inaweza tukura. Kwanza ukiambiwa kufagia unasema mimi. Diploma hapa. Kufagia? Ah. Kama ungenipa supervisor. <laughs> Ningia consider. Thank you Samuel. <laughs> we are separated. Yes. But we are not isolated. Kukiwa na njaa inakuta wa kristo. Na wale wengine. Corona akija. Anagonga bishop. Na anagonga mshika wa kawaida. Ah, uyu corona nae. Kwani ana adabu? 
anapiga vice president hey hata president wa america alikonjeka hey <laughs> i thought it was very funny this man is so powerful hata si ana masantis wanaweza ona wadudu wanakimbia kimbia hapa but hata yeye alikonjeka <laughs> we are in the world separated all right but not isolated hata yafunikwa tusione vile bbi iko kwangu na kwako kwa sababu niko Kenya nikataa kusikia unajua wengine tunasema mimi sisiki utaiona kwa gazeti ukienda kwa chief atakuuliza kama umesupport BBI ili akusainie mahali you know mimi nimeokoka hizo vitu asitaki naye chief anakuambia basi kama utake kusupport na nimeambiwa na serikali Wacha nisipitie pale kwa sababu wengine najua mulishikwa hapo when you went for hell. The thing is life of honor is separated but it is not isolated. Even those around Abraham knew that he was different from them. They knew he was different also from Lot that he loved God and he stayed away from sin and the things like those but when Lot had a problem they also knew Lot's uncle was up there. Go tell him Genesis 14:13a and there came one that had escaped and told Abraham the Hebrew oh man the Hebrew and this is the first time the word Hebrew is used in scripture it means one from beyond it communicates the idea that we are outsiders we are separated but we are not isolated You see even the world here they know that Christians ought to be separated. Si wanajua. Si wanajua. Wanajua. Ukiwaambia wewe ni bishop wewe ni pastor kama walikuwa nakunywa pombe watakwambia bishop sasa tunataka kwanza uende ama wafiche kwanza ukiondoka hata nimeenda rurashio fulani. Kwa sababu wanajua mimi ni bishop pombe ilikuwa imewekwa kwa gari unapeleka kijana rurashio lakini pombe imewekwa kwa gari hauambiwi mama yake haambiwi hatujulishwi lakini alikuwa ameambiwa na ankoo wa msichana uje na kidu kana kidu sasa tumekaa tumekaa unaanza kusikia rurashio ni kama unafukuzwa we bishop mtaenda saa ngapi <laughs> Nawe kama ni mtu mwerevu si utashika note. Eh nitaenda saa hii. <laughs> so finally nikauliza nilipotoka what was happening? Nikaambia eh hey, hizo magari maboot. Sasa nikikupeleka rurashio nataka kuangalia boot umebeba nini. <laughs> Number three, life of honor is focused on the provider not the provision and I, i i i hope you're going to understand this if your life is going to be a life of honor thank god for the provision but that is not where you dwell on you think about the provider genesis 14 where we read now this is where the story comes and the king of sodom went to meet him after his return from the slaughter of chedorama while with him at the valley of shiva which is the king's dale and melchizedek king of shem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high and he blessed him and said blessed be abram of the most high god possessor of heaven and earth and bless the most high god which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand and he gave him tithes of all and the king of sodom shindwe comes and tells abram give me the persons and take the goods and the man of god says no i have lifted up my hands and i have said sitachukua kitu ambacho si changu alafu uende kuringa ringa ukiambia watu ni mimi nimemfanya abraham awe tajiri so when it comes to the most sub, sub, uh, we 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 have come to the most important part of the story of abraham because here he is He is being tested and tried. And this would impact his life even in the future. 
regarding of where his focus was. And it stands as one of the most clear choices ever present, presented to man in scripture. Where are you going to be? What are you going to choose? What do you want to choose today? And the question remains, who will Abraham choose to honor? Himself or God? Himself or God? If it is himself, unasema, nipewe mali. Ni mimi nimeleta mali. But Abraham says, no, take it. And he carries tithe. You know, <laughs> this week I had a very interesting story. And please, let me tell you. Nikita kuwambi utambi wa nanani. Uwe ukiuliza mtu unawacha kwako, do you tithe? Unamuacha kwako, but just ask them, uwe unatuwaga fugura kumi. Kama atuwagi muende nae. Kama naibaga mungu atayo atakuiba. You never got what I said. Anybody who is able to tithe is not a thief. But anybody who has a problem of even tithing, which was his, ni yako. Uyo mtu mchunga sana pita. Uyo, unaweza muacha kwako na kuna wasichana. Ni kumuambia, sikuachi. Igia kwa gari. Ni kueke kona. Tutaona na jioni ni kirudi. If he's a friend. You know, unamuambia, ni kiwa wako, unajua welcome. So I heard that story this, <laughs> this week of this man we were burying on Friday. He was known by many people that he used to tell them, Bishop or pastor, if you have leaders that don't tithe, watakuvuruta chini. But if you have leaders that tithe, oh man, what a service. What a service. It becomes fantastic. But if you have leaders that have problem, Ata sadaka wataiba. Ahasha azwale awaja okoka. Na watu wagi fungu. Ikiwekwa kwa kikapu hile kubwa. Ata beba hile nono. Tawacha tule tudogo huko tuko chini huko. But anybody who tights hata akiipata hapa utazama akiuliza ini ya nani? Kwa sababu wanajua utajiri wake ya utaletu wana pesa hameokota chini. Ati oh hallelujah, hata, hata uyu conductor hata haku kumbuka kuniitisha, uyu ni mungu. <laughs> king of Salem, what does this mean King of Salem? Burning, it means burning. King of Sodom means bearer, son of evil. King of Salem means priest of the most high God. And the priest of the Most High God was offering blessings of God. Yes, but Bera offered something of the world. King of Salem, picture of Christ, priest of the Most High, picture of Christ. And Bera, king of Sodom, picture of the world. And picture of the world, you want to compromise the things of God. I have to say this. If you have ever been given a gift, Amen? By anybody. But instead of focusing on the goodness and the greatness of the giver, you focus on the greatness of the gift, you are missing the point. Oh, nimepewa gari na bishop. Oh, nimepewa hii na bishop. You are missing the point. Look at this person who is giving. Appreciate him. If you appreciate him, anaweza kukupatia igine. Because pale ilitoka, kumebaki zigine. Did you know, if somebody gave you a hundred shillings, ujua mebaki na ingine. Haikuwa, si unielewe buwani. Nobody can give you a hundred abaki bida. Na akikupa moja, kumebaki zigine nyingi. Kwa hivyo kijifundisha kwa appreciate, anaweza rudi mfuku, asema, na inimeona hiyo mia moja, Ninaona ni kama uwezo kwa hivyo ni kuongeza igine. Kumbe ni wewe umeitoa. Ilikuwa imefichu andani. Focus on God. Do you want your marriage restored more than you want the restorer? If you want your marriage restored so much that you forget the restorer, again you are not honoring God. I want the restorer. Awe ya kikaa kwangu. Na asitumane. Do you want your provision increase more than you want the provider? 
Yaani wewe kila siku tukianza kuomba nipe 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 niongeze. Hata hiyo niongeze, hata hiyo niongeze. Oh you want the provider to be staying with you. Me I want the provider in my house. Na asitumane. Because I know when he is there my provision will be there. Do you want your children to return to God more than you want God who can return them? If that is all your cry, oh, nirudishie watoto wacha wakujue. Na ule mungu anayeweza warudisha, umpi heshima, unajipa heshima mwenyewe. If you want what God can do you for you more than, what, more than the way you want God, you have chosen to honor yourself. If you want God more than what he can do for you, then you have chosen to honor God and this becomes the life of honor. You're looking for the life of honor. Then honor him. Genesis 2 verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get thee out of, their, of your country and from their kindred and from their father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. And make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and I will cast them that cast thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. You know, how easy would it have been for Abraham to receive from the son of evil, the king of the burning, all the loot that was offered to him instead of honoring God. But, you know, I like demonstrating this. Ebu kuja, kuja. Kibira, kibira kuja. Let me try to demonstrate this. This is the priest. This man is the priest of the most holy God and he's holding a cup and bread. This man is the king of Sodom. Look at the way he is. Very. And Abraham is coming from <laughs> this side is coming and he has won the battle and he's coming with three eighteen men and they are singing Yendembele injirio Yendembele Yendembele inji. Now among those two what do you think the king of Sodom is imagining? Me I'm the king. Abraham must come to where I am. The priest he's just holding his emblems. So Abraham comes and instead of going to the king of Sodom, he goes to this man of God. And he's often mukate. Holy communion hai kwanza jana. Anapewa holy communion hapa kwanza. Akipewa holy communion anarudi kwa mfuko. Anatoa zaka yake hapa. Hey! Priest! Wow! Uyu Anafanya kitu ambacho, that's what I ask people to receive. Blessing. Anabariki Abraham na anabariki mungu. What do I need? Is it wealth or blessing? This man immediately, now, huyo anahanza kusikia kakitu. Wacha nita kushinda wewe. Abraham, mtuwa mungu. Fanya hivi bwana. Hizo malizote, siwende nazo. Nipe watu tu. Do you know, from this blessing, there is nothing else that Abraham needs. He doesn't need people. He doesn't need. He only needs the blessing. So he tells the man, keep your things. Mimi nikibarikiwa. Hapa. Usija ukasema ni wewe. When you. Munaisa ketichini. King of Sodom. Na priest. Hallelujah. How is it to have been for Abraham to receive from the son of evil the things that he was promised but he chose no. I will go holy communion. I'm going to commune with God. Receive his blessing. A life of honor honors God. Not materials and things. I don't know how I can say this. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, Abraham, with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. That has Ziko juu binguni. Who are you choosing to honor? God or self? What will you choose today? Will you choose 
to go to the priest and receive a blessing, to go to God and receive a blessing? Or will you would you want to receive the accolades of the world and the things that the world can give? Because if you do that, you will be honoring yourself. I want to make a conclusion. When Abraham chose to honor God rather than to honor himself with the bounty of the world, he was saying these words. Take the world, but give me Jesus. Ona ingiaga gedomo ke ingeni ende na Jesu gwenda ki ahe Alleluia de na Jesu gwenda ki Ona ingiaga siana ni ingeni ende na Jesu gwenda ki ahe Alleluia, dena Jesu gwenda ki. Ona ingiaga bulina ngombe ni edena Jesu. Ahe, ahe, alleluia, dena Jesu. That's what Abraham is saying. If I have Jesus, even if I lack wealth, cows, goats, children, wife, family, if I have Jesus, what else do I need? If you want to honor God, that must be your conclusion. Even if I don't have a job, if I have Jesus, what else do I need? If I don't have a plot to build my own house or I don't live in my own house if I have Jesus, what else do I want? If that is my conviction, because that was the conviction of Abraham, he honored God. If you honor God, Remember what we have said. Where, where you cannot be victimized, you go above people that want to victimize others. Our gracious Heavenly Father, look at us today. Yes, we want our marriages to be restored. So much that we forget the restorer. God have mercy on us. Our Heavenly Father, we are looking for provision. Some of it is financial. And we cleave for it so much that we forget the provider. Oh God. Our prayer is that there will be a shift in our spirit. Every time something happens to us, we will look for the source, the provider, the healer, the redeemer, the deliverer, the God who has given us these things. Even our children, when they do well, we will look for that grace. The man who has given us that grace and given our children that grace. And him we will honor. Because to live a life of honor is to honor God. And we know when we honor God, it is like we are saying, God, I will honor you. It's like we are saying, then because we honor you, we shall mount up with wings as eagles. I don't know where you are. Maybe you have been caught very easily pursuing things instead of the giver of things. Forgetting the healer. Appreciating the healing. If that is you and that is the situation you find yourself in, I think it is time for you to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me the many times that I have lost it when I have found provision. I have forgotten the provider. Oh, forgive me when I have forgotten the healer by cleaving to healings. Oh God, help me to remember the redeemer even when I've been redeemed because many times I forget. If that is a kind of a cry from your heart, just lift up your hands up. Say, Lord, save me from this. Save me from this attitude. Save me from this situation I find myself instead of appreciating the giver, I look at what I've been given. Father, we are saying, pardon us and forgive us. And because in you there is all the forgiveness, help us, even in the next provision that is going to happen this week, 
that we will look for the provider. Even the healing that is going to happen this week, we will so be glad for the healer. We will go to the healer. We will carry our everything to the healer because we have known for us to live life of honor, we have to honor you. We honor you and we give you thanks. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name.